How are you supposed to write about your little brother's life and death? It's impossible to put into words what it meant to our family. It's impossible to describe someone so full of love for people and fiercely protective of those around him. I think anyone that knew him can, uh, can attest to that. I think uh, all I can really do today is uh, tell you a little bit about my brother. I think that's the best I can do. <laughs> when Lucas was a toddler, he couldn't say the word Pedro. He couldn't say my name, but he could say the name of the Teletubby Po, so that's what he called me. <laughs> Close enough, I suppose. In the same vein, I would call him Baby, because that's what I'd always heard him refer to as, the baby of the Mackenzie family. Almost all my early childhood memories revolve around hearing that name Poe shouted out, or me calling for Baby, and then some new adventure would begin. Lucas was also my personal bug squasher as a child. If I spotted a bug around the house, I'd shout for Baby, and he would come pottering over. And I'd grab him by his shoulders and point him towards a threat, and he would eliminate it with a swift jab. <laughs> swift jab of his little finger. Some of you may have had the absolute pleasure of witnessing us as children when we would entertain guests. We memorized every word to Baby One More Time by Britney Spears, <laughs> and Man, I Feel Like a Woman by Shania Twain. <laughs> We even had some dance moves to go with it. I don't know why we chose those songs or what that says about us, but I'll leave that to you to decide. Interesting couple. Despite being my younger brother, Lucas would always be the one to look out for me. Anyone who knew him can attest his protective spirit. In primary school, we played rugby together, and even though he was younger and smaller and probably weaker than everyone around him, he'd still be the one to check in on me during games. If he thought someone had tackled me too high or was a little bit too rough, he'd be on their case for the rest of the game. It was like having my own personal bodyguard. Lucas was always the first one to step in if he saw something he knew wasn't right, thinking nothing of himself or his own safety. He was also incredibly thoughtful from a very young age. I remember sitting in a car with him and listening to him ask my mum and dad to pray for people that he saw on the streets as we drove by whether they were homeless or disabled or just simply looking down. I remember at the time I didn't think much of it, just my brother being weird, but looking back I see how powerful it is for a young child to be thinking of others so deeply and so caringly. I believe God gave Lucas a powerful and a terrible gift to feel the pain of others far deeper than most. He was always drawn to those he knew were suffering, a trait which brought him a lot of pain. You never hear him complain, but if you look closely enough in his eyes, you'd see the wounds that he carried. That caring, protective spirit never disappeared from Lucas. Even as we grew older, he always made sure to check in on me regularly to see how I was doing, often at the most random hours. It was during one of these 3 a.m. visits to my room that he told me of his plans for the future, about how he'd become rich and buy houses for the entire family. I look forward to seeing little Carson, and we're just getting to know Kova as well. He wanted to bless our family in Paisley, or travel to Brazil to see our cousins there. He would paint a picture of a future where none of us would have to worry anymore, because he'd have figured everything out. Luke just simply wanted to make the world a better place. Unfortunately, today, our world is a little bit worse, because he's no longer in it. With so many losses in our family, this past year has been the hardest of our lives so far, and it's now only gotten a little bit more difficult. But please know that we serve a good God. He's still good. He wants to be close to us and know you and guide you, even if we can't always understand the path he's taken us down. Lucas taught me many things in his short time with us. But this life is not a gift. Uh, it's a gift. <laughs> it's a gift, sorry. Let's not waste it or throw it away. You have to fight every day for people around you. You have to be a source of strength for those who feel weak and a protector for those who are alone. Be a warm smile and a loud laugh in a world that often feels cold and quiet. My brother was these things for me and for many others. Don't be afraid to tell people around you that you love them. When Lucas said I love you, you could feel that he meant it. To his family near and far, know that Lucas truly loved you, 
and thought of you always. To his friends, know that Lucas thought of you as family too, even if we don't share the same blood. I will see you again one day, Lucas. One day I'll turn and you'll be there, as will our whole family. You'll get to meet your nieces and nephews and be the amazing uncle you always dreamed of being. I can't wait to introduce you to my future family. But for now, we'll live on this earth without your physical presence. Rest in peace, little brother.